Hey folks, welcome back. I'm Dave and we're here in my shop where I build E-War guitars. This is going to be episode number 16 in the series where I'm building this guy right here. This is my uh, offset double humbucker set neck uh, tapered stripe uh, guitar I'm building with cherry and black cherry and zero coat. And I think it's looking pretty cool. Um, this video we are going to cover the final steps of finishing this guitar. Now in the last one we went through the sanding process and we did uh, we did the Simtex sealer and of course as you can see I've got my last round of Simtex sealer on here but I'm not going to bother taking you through the sanding thing again since we've already done that so I'm going to just real quick whip out the sanding on this thing and then get on with the video. Okay it's all sanded now so now we can get back into this video and uh, and get moving on. Before we do I want to do something. Uh, you know, I really enjoy the comments that you all make uh, on my on my videos, and a lot of times it's it's advice, and I get a lot of advice from a lot of you folks, and I really do appreciate it. Um, I just want to encourage you to keep that going, and I just want to show you some products I've bought from the advice you all give me. Here's some easy inlay. This is Mother of Pearl Flakes. When I was having a struggle with my uh, doing the V carving uh, with tiny little letters, I had somebody uh, suggest I do that, so I bought myself some of that. When I was struggling with uh, cutting fret slots in my thing, talking about how expensive the bits are and I hate to keep breaking them, somebody told me about these, uh, these 10 for $30 bits here on eBay. These are 0 .023 uh, inch bits. Somebody suggested that and I got those things. Somebody else suggested I got a multi, uh, uh, a multi fluted V bit here because I was using a V bit and they said this is better because it increases the chip load or something like that. And uh, anyway, um, and these are all comments and suggestions, and there's been many others. These are just the few recent ones that, that I've gotten that I haven't actually even used yet. But uh, anyway, I really appreciate the comments, and I appreciate you all sharing your advice as more experienced people or just experienced with different facets of these things like inlays and stuff like that. I really appreciate that, and, and I hope as I grow as a luthier, I can show these different things that I'm learning and become a, kind of a better YouTube teacher guy. Anyway, so anyway, just thank you for that. I want to show you all that stuff, but let's get moved on with this video. Okay, so as I just showed you in my little trick videography stuff there, uh, this guy is all completely sanded now. So that's 360 grit. Um, and I sand thing is just absolutely silky smooth. No little shiny spots, no, uh, no uh, inconsistencies or anything. And we're definitely ready to move on. And incidentally, one quick note is, as you see, I pulled off the tape off of the fretboard um, when I did this final sanding. That's because I wanted to get rid of that ridge right there in between my Simtex sealer and the unfinished edge of the fretboard. Uh, I wanted to keep that smooth as possible. So I take the tape off in between these stages like this to uh, sand that really smooth. But anyway, uh, so the next stage of this thing is I got to start putting finish on it. And though I'm really digging this color and I like my little uh, my inlay stripes going around the thing and I love the contrast between the black cherry and the zero coat, I think it needs a little something more for depth and definition. And so what I believe I want to do is I want to do a very slight burst, a dark, uh, dark brown, as dark as I can get it burst just around the edge of this thing and maybe shoot a little bit onto the, I mean totally see-through but just a faint little burst around the edge which is just going to kind of highlight the center portion of the guitar and I think I may run it up the uh, I may run it you know bring it around the back of course too and I may re even run it slightly up the up each side of the neck and I think that's going to look pretty cool so uh the what I'm going to use for that is uh of course now I've got finish on this thing so there ain't no going back and staining it and I honestly, I kind of prefer this anyway. So what I like to do is I like to take my trans tint dye. This is a concentrated uh, stain or dye that you can mix uh, trans tint. You can mix it in water. You can mix it in alcohol. You can mix it in lacquer thinner. Uh, in my case, I like to mix this stuff in a product called DBC 500. Now this is a inner coat clear. It's a urethane. It's part of the urethane. Uh, painting system for guitar. This is an inner coat clear or a clear coat. And what you do is you mix this with a little bit of reducer and you could put a few drops of your color in there and you're basically spraying on stain instead of actually staining the wood. I kind of like it better. It's less blotchy. I can sort of control it. 
I've got a nice little Iwata gun here. This is a little detail gun that's just perfect for this type of thing. I can mix up a couple tablespoons of that in here and just keep, and, and I could turn this nozzle down to where this is, I could turn this guy right here down, this where this is spraying about a one inch round pattern. And I could use that to spray around the edges of this guitar and spray it on the edges and kind of control it uh, to a pretty good degree. So uh, anyway, that's what I think I'm gonna do. And I've monkeyed around a little bit. I've tried a couple different colors on here. I tried, let me see, what did I try here? I tried a dark mission brown. I'm trying to match the darkest colors in the zero coat. So I got dark mission brown, I got dark walnut, um, coffee brown, and Cordovan brown. And I picked the coffee brown. It just seems to me to be the as close to black as you can get without being black. And, uh, and I think that's gonna kinda look good, you know? And of course, I'm gonna spray this on in extraordinarily thin layers, okay? And I'll just keep building it till I kinda catch the, the color I want. Now, it's been a while since I've done this, so I hope it all comes out okay. But, uh, but anyway, that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna get this guitar hung up over there, get it wiped down, go through all that stuff again, and mix up some of this uh, coffee brown in the DBC 500 and see how we do spraying it on there. Get a little burst effect going on. Okay, so here I'm gonna mix my DBC 500, which is a Deltron, it's a PPG uh, paint. It is like top of the line automobile urethane uh, coatings. And this is, like I said, an inner coat clear. So uh, you can use it in between color coats if you wanna, if you've got pinstriping, let's say, and you want to build up over the, the tape joint on the pinstriping, you could do your color coats, pinstripe, all that kind of thing, and then use this DBC 500 to clear over it to kind of level off the highs and lows. Or you can use it as a, uh, a, a carrier for the stain, so to speak, which is what we're going to use it for. So um, it's real simple what I do. I'm probably going to mix up. This is a tablespoon. Let's see if I do, I may do like three of these. One. Two, I need very, very little stuff. Three, and then I mix it on a one-to-one -one ratio. I'm gonna put the lid back on that. Mix it on a one-to-one one -one ratio with the uh, reducer. So I'm gonna do three reducers. One, two, three, okay. Now, I'm gonna put in a few drops of my coffee brown trans tint dye. That is probably plenty. I'll know for sure as soon as I start spraying this stuff. I gotta fold these filters way up because it barely they don't fit in these these little guns. Anyway, let me pour it on in there. Okay, so we got some in there. Like I said, this is just a great little gun. It's, uh, it's an Iwata LPH-80. Excellent gun, excellent gun. So let's go ahead and get this over to the, uh, over the, my uh, spray area there. Get this joker dialed in and let's see if we can't put down some burst. Okay, so I've kept my spray mask off during this so I could talk a little bit. Um, I've got this guy adjusted down, so little stuff is coming out. I've got good airflow with my fan uh, spraying. So I'm really hoping I could uh, do this without, uh, anyway, without uh, having my mask on. So I'm gonna try very, very light coats, just like this.
Definitely put a little color on there. I want to try to I believe I'm gonna go put a couple more drops of uh, the uh, coffee brown in there just to darken that up a little bit because I don't want to layer on too, too many layers. So I think I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna just increase this by just a couple of drops and see what happens. Okay, let's give it another go. I personally think that gives it a nice uh, kind of an aged look to it. I think I really like that. And I like that color going right down the neck and everything. I tried to keep it on the edges. I think I'm digging that. I think that's going to look pretty cool. Nice. I think I'm stopping right there. You can still see my uh, inlaid wood in there and stuff. and. Of course, the neck stripes look awesome. I'm, I think I'm good. I think I'm going to stop right there. All right, so uh, there it is. I think it looks pretty cool. I'm kind of digging the whole thing. I think it gives it sort of a, almost an antique-ish sort of a look to it. I don't know. Let me know what you think in the comments. I'm, I'm thinking it's kind of cool. You can still see all the detail and everything, the uh, inlays in there and all that stuff. It's got like a, I don't know if you call that a tobacco type of color. The, co the color was uh, coffee. So uh, anyway, I thought it was pretty cool. I think it looks really cool up the neck too. So 
Uh, anyway, I'm going to hang this back aside for now, and we're going to move on to the next stage. Incidentally, that coat, uh, I let it dry overnight. I could have sprayed it probably within 30 minutes uh, with a clear top coat, but I, it was getting late last night, and I decided to let it set overnight, and uh, so now I'm going to hit it again. Um, what I want to do now is I'm going to put the final top coat on, and what I think I want to try to do, I've got some... Let's see here. I've got some Tamco's Euro Clear, which is a super high gloss, uh, like a glamour finish. I mean, it's really a beautiful high gloss finish. I use it a lot. And I also have their Matte Clear, too. I don't necessarily want a really super high gloss, but I don't necessarily want a matte finish either. And, uh, and I looked up their technical data sheets and everything, and I was looking to see. Uh, I believe you can mix these two together. I'm not 100% sure. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to mix a ratio of these two together. They both take the same reducer and they both take the same hardener. Um, so I'm thinking I could probably mix them together. I'm going to probably mix a 50-50 ratio, put in the reducer and the hardener, and then test it out on this piece right here. This is a piece of mahogany I have that's been sealed and it's got a clear on it. I just sanded it down uh, so it's about like the body on the guitar is right now. Now I'm going to mix up some of this stuff and give it a shot. So, and if it looks like it's going to work out on this, I'm going to go ahead and shoot it on the guitar then too. And I think that'll look kind of cool. I want it to have sort of a, a, a matte finish, kind of a worn, uh, worn finish on the thing is what I'm kind of looking for. So anyway, um, let me turn that camera down. We're going to get this stuff mixed up and we're going to shoot it on this little sample board here and see how it goes. Okay, so here's that piece. Um, I was hoping to have it a bit duller than that. Uh, that's definitely not the super high gloss that I would normally get with just a straight gloss, but it's still not matte enough for me. So I think what I'm gonna do, that was just basically one decent coat on the thing. I adjusted the gun and then gave it a decent coat. So what I think I'm gonna do, that was uh, two mattes, two gloss, two hardeners and one reducer. I'm gonna add a mat, a tablespoon of mat. I'm going to add a half a reduce, a hardener rather, and then three quarters of a reducer and see what that does for us. Remember, this is all purely experimental. We're doing it on this piece of mahogany. And if I decide I don't like it in the end, we haven't touched the guitar yet and we'll do something else. Okay, so my little experiment uh, told me what I really needed to know. I've got this mixed with, uh, I have four mats to two gloss. So that would be, what, two, two thirds and a third. Um, and I'm still getting too much gloss on the thing. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go straight matte finish. That is the finish I have on this guitar I built a couple years ago. And then when it's all said and done, this is really basically the look I was looking for. I was just hoping to get a little more gloss out of it. And, uh, but really, I looked back at this thing. I thought, you know what? That's really, that's really pretty cool. Let's just go with this. So anyway, I am going to go ahead and mix up just this uh, Tamco Matte Clear, just following the instructions on the label. And we're going to shoot that on that guitar, and we're going to see what the heck it looks like.
Okay, so that was exactly the look I'm looking for right there. That's just one coat and that just came out just as, uh, I think it looks really, really nice with this color scheme I got going here and that sort of that antique-ish uh, thought I had in my head. I'm just like very, very happy with that. I did wind up with a little bit of like overspray on this top edge there, probably when I was shooting the face, but uh, hopefully that'll go away this time. That was just one coat. I've got enough in there. I think you give it two more coats. And uh, so let's, uh, let's hit it again and see what it looks like. Okay, so that was two, uh, two coats on that thing, and I'm just digging the heck out of this thing. I really love that look, that, uh, that burst I did on top of the cherry. Just, I think to me, these colors are really, uh, really speaking to me. And, uh, and I think I've got enough in that gun to do one more coat of the mat, and I think that's gonna be it. So uh, let's go ahead and do that, and then see where we wind up. All right, so there it is. It's uh, been, uh, I guess, six or seven hours since I sprayed that last uh, round on there. I did three coats on this thing, and I just can't be happier. I, I hope you all could see it in the camera there. Um, I, I'm very, very happy with the way this came out. Just what was in my head, kind of an aged look to it, and uh, you know, the matte finish just looks great. I'm just really, really pleased with the whole thing. Just the neck and everything came out really well. Anyway, uh, so that's it. So that's my uh, finishing deal. Now what I got to do is on this is uh, uh, there's a slight bit of texture to this. I mean, very little, you know, some dust specks and, and just very, very little, but there's kind of a feel to it, you know, and I want to get rid of that. And there is a little bit of overspray, like I was talking about before, a little bit of overspray up here. So what I've already done the neck so far is I've taken this 1500 grit uh, super Aslix paper and I'm just going over it very lightly um, just sanding it all very lightly and that just kind of knocks that surface off it leaves just a, a really nice uh, natural sheen to it and uh, and I think it feels and looks really great so anyway I'm gonna do that to the rest of this body and um, and I think that's it so I think that's it for this video um, appreciate you all sticking around and checking it out and this is only my second time using the matte uh, clear and I'm very happy with it. I, I tried doing something different, but look, I'm sticking with just the straight up matte clear for now on. And uh, cause I'm, I'm really pleased, really pleased. So uh, anyway, if y'all coming back next week, you know, I got brass hardware going on this thing, but now just straight up brass is gonna be way too shiny for this thing. So I'm gonna see if I can't uh, take the, the clear finish off of the brass hardware I got and maybe age it a little bit to kind of more suit this antique looking guitar. So anyway, I hope you all come back and check it out again. If you dig this sort of thing, how about you give me a like and subscribe. Anyway, come on back next week and we'll be working on the hardware. So in the meantime, God bless you and we'll see you all in the next one.